Hi there. But I quit YouTube. Well, you heard the little lady. Salutations, everyone. I'm not really sure why I'm recording right now. I guess I'm just going to be making a random vlog. Going to be heading out to the trails. I'm going to be going to GE Trails as always. And I'm going to be eating a Fiber One brownie bite while I'm at it. Along with bringing some water. Plastic water is bad for you, Fee Cat. Does it look like I could afford a mansion, you peasant? Well, okay. That's fine. What do you want from me, YouTube? All right, I'm ready to get my cardio in yet again. So I have eaten a lot over the weekend because that's what I typically do and I still do lose the weight. So I'm just ready to get the exercise in because I just feel so lazy. <laughs> That's the beauty of calisthenics, you can do it anywhere. Alright, I just finished getting my 10,000 steps. It's a little over, I'm about 12k steps right now, but the more the merrier because I have eaten a lot of pho over the last 12 hours, so it's good to burn all that off. Gonna be heading to Ingalls. It's been a while since I've been out there. All right, just finished getting all my groceries at Ingalls. I forgot to record the experience, so <laughs> that tends to happen now. Like, I don't have that dedication to vlog as much that I just keep forgetting to vlog. All right, I guess redemption. I'm gonna be going to the East Highway to pick up some stuff at the Wally World there because some stuff at the Wally World here, they don't typically have like fat-free mozzarella cheese, so I gotta pick that up. Gonna get some flank steak as well. Just got some refunds, refunds, refunds from school and also the IRS from the stimulus check and all, so gonna be spending as much as I can. Dang, I gotta wash the car. All this freaking pollen. are looking pretty good right now yep that's that's the entire clip for a 25 second road trip compilation yeah it's put a good bit in there they had some reduced fat cheese in there some fat free cheese obviously that i was looking for i uh, got the flank steak so being an overall athlete i noticed the signs are a lot different in comparison to like being a runner to a skateboarder when you're a skateboarder it's pretty much a race on its own people treat like you're a criminal and like you're the worst person on the earth they yell from their car, hey skater, you suck. It's not a good feeling, but when you're a runner, nobody really bothers you. They just say hi and then that's it. They just let you get your 10K steps. So yeah, I can do this at peace, but when I'm like skateboarding, it's like nobody really wants me to do that. By the way, I learned a new starting trick with the nunchucks. Don't ask me why I brought them. Not a lot of room in here, so makes me a little paranoid like I'm gonna hit something. Do a couple of these where it has to bounce onto your tricep. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now that I'm getting the hang of doing this, I might as well try to catch it, huh? There we go. Ah, so I can actually hit people this way too. So basically, this is what you do. All right, so getting to the title of the video, here's how I progress to the metal split. I made a program for myself because no programs I found on the internet has helped me and at the end of the day it just comes down to the person and their weak points. In this case I had very stiff hamstrings. I do recommend that you should be able to do at least standing toe touches before trying my program. There is a program video that helped me learn that in my Patreon page. I only hold each stretch for about 2 minutes except for the last 2 stretches. This first one is called Asian Squats. I've been doing this all my life and thought it was just normal squats. 
You simply just squat down with both your feet flat on the floor and your butt does not touch the ground. Don't arch your back, make sure to keep it straight, and that's it. You hold this for two minutes as you would for the next couple of stretches until the last two stretches. Next is a hamstring stretch. It is unilateral, meaning that you're doing it on both sides. So I would get into what they would call a Cossack squat. Lay the left bending knee onto the ground and use your right hand to reach for your feet. I like to break this down into four levels of intensity here. Level one being to reach your toes with your right hand. Level two to reach your heel with your right hand. Level three to reach your toes with your left hand. And level four to reach your heel with your left hand. Same thing on the other side, but you know, vice versa. Now you're going to be doing the same thing, except you'll be putting one leg on an object while the other leg is standing straight or slightly bent is fine too. If you're starting out, an object that's much easier to begin with would be a chair or a table. You do not have to launch your leg up as high as I did here just yet. Just find what you're most comfortable laying your leg on with that's efficient enough to get a good stretch. Again, this is also unilateral and you'll be doing the four levels of intensity. Onto the final two minute stretch is the butterfly stretch. A very popular stretch, but it can be effective. You simply put both of your feet together, put them closer to your groin for a deeper stretch, and push down as much as you can. Make sure you're wearing loose clothes doing this by the way. As I was recording this, I had a tear in my compression pants. You do not have to do this on a bench, but it does help with pushing down on the stretch. Now the second to last one is something I think I came up with. Kind of an easier way to get into a middle split than doing those horse stance stretches. I spend three minutes holding this stretch. I'm using three chairs of some sort and I try to push myself into a middle split this way. When I started out I had to move all the way back and then scoot closer day by day, but eventually it'll get easier. Once you reach your limit, rock your body forward 12 times and that's it. You can do other stretches like wrist circles that I'm doing here, get on your phone, or just wait for the remainder of time. And final stretch is the leg stretcher. I saved this one for last because it's the most intense one out of all of them. It's simple. You just put your legs on the long end of the leg stretcher handles and you pull the middle handle in front of you. But if that's too hard, you can use a wall to push yourself forward. Or what I did here, I used a bench with a handle and just pushed that towards me. Hi there! Once you maxed out like I did here, you can tell by the handles not supporting my legs anymore that you're now flexible enough to go into a middle split. And that's pretty much it. That's how my routine goes with doing the middle split. Again, this program was made special for me, so I can't guarantee that it's going to help you achieve the middle split. I just wanted to give my take on it. And as far as pain-free goes, it's definitely not pain-free. I did feel a lot of pain doing this first few days I've started out. But as I said, eventually, it starts feeling less and less painful. And it becomes easier. So hopefully, you're educated enough from this. I'm not a stretch expert, so hopefully this was enough info that I could give. Oh my gosh, mouth review. I stopped caring at this point. If you have a problem with how I look, then you can go F yourself. So shout out to Corey Duffel for selling me these pants for $20. These are the exact pants that he wore when he skated in these clips. I cut my hands to watch it bleed. I guess we're at that age when pain is so real. You just have to see. It's Thanksgiving. He said these would feel super tight, but they do not feel that tight on me, but I guess that's because I'm a smaller person than he is. I 
I don't mean to be a food Nazi or anything, and this would totally sound really hypocritical, but every time I drive through a fast food place and see people taking the drive through, I'm just like, why are you eating like crap? You should be living your life in a healthier state. But I know I've been through that like three years ago. Hey, can I get the 20 piece chicken nugget? No, what are you doing the old me? So yeah, people do think that I'm a food Nazi. If you think that, then you definitely have not been watching my videos thoroughly because I do live an anabolic lifestyle, which is kind of just making lower calorie versions of fast food and junk food and all that. And even then, in the weekends, I still splurge and eat stuff like a Publix chicken tender sub. And I can still lose the weight. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna have it with some hot sauce too. Gives it a good taste. Speaking of anabolic, look what I found. So these are the lowest calorie elbows that I could find that aren't shirataki. Shirataki's garbage. Do not buy that, despite how low calorie it is. This, the entire bag, which is 8 ounces, just 400 calories. That could make anabolic goulash. I had tried the spaghetti version. I'm not a fan of marinara, so that kind of took the taste away from me. But the spaghetti did not really taste that bad at all. The pasta was actually okay. And if you're still not convinced, look at the calories on these normal elbows here. So, 2 ounces right here is 200 calories. So, easy math there, 8 ounces is 800 calories. So, that's a 50% cut. That's insane from those elbows that I just showed in the kitchen. Here's where the weight is before I went ahead with my refeed weekend. I hit a plateau the last few weeks despite that I stayed tracked with calories. I would say it makes sense because I was full of energy consuming a lot of carbohydrates and I felt I could have ran 30 to 50k steps if I wanted to, but it didn't because that's called overtraining. Here's an anabolic cookbook that I use from time to time, but most of the time I just come up with my own ideas and I just write it on a notepad. Maybe I should come up with my own PDF as well. But anywho, bodybuilders typically do this just so their diet isn't boring. So yeah, this, I think I've only used the high-protein banana bread, but the measurements for the water is wrong. I don't know why, it just comes out moist. Here's a few that I came up with in case you don't use Twitter. This is a tortilla pizza. This next one is a spicy chicken burrito. And this last one right here is a real lifesaver. It is lean beef congee with two added eggs and also some minced ginger and it just changed the flavor to a whole different level and it's really satisfying too. Even if you have a big appetite, this will fill you up and it's only 498 calories. All right, I got a math test soon, so I'm gonna wrap this episode up by telling you what pathway I am on. So, becoming a personal trainer, I am currently on the journey to getting my associate's degree in exercise science. But what I did not realize after taking a project for this class that I can become a certified personal trainer a lot quicker than this. This is gonna take two years, but over the summer, I'm gonna be taking ACE, which is the American Council of Exercise, and I've heard a lot of positive reviews about it. Um, I think it costs about $500, but it's about a three to six month pathway, and you can become certified. For me, it'd be about autumn, so I can become a personal trainer by autumn. So yeah, over the summer, I'm gonna be taking this, and I'm looking forward to that and seeing how it goes. But even after I become a certified personal trainer under ACE, I may still continue my journey under the associate's degree in exercise science because you can still have more jobs than just a personal trainer. So we'll see how this all goes in the future. So I'm actually recording for the next episode as we speak, but I'm gonna record this for this episode so I could say thanks to Ryan from Minus the Gym for pretty much changing my life and getting me into fitness. I didn't think I was gonna like calisthenics because pull-ups were involved with it and I was a little bit skeptical because I could not learn pull-ups. But after a couple of months of his videos, it really helped me out. And also, thanks to him for being the only personal trainer for a answering my interview questions, excuse me. My battery's about to die, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up real quick. But yeah, his answer to the interview questions has made me a whole lot more positive about becoming a personal trainer. So uh, yeah, thanks to him. I'm gonna go ahead and end this now because battery's gonna die, as I said. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this episode and I'll see you all in the next one. Stay awesome, cute sabers.